Shalom. Today we're going to do another pair of small, easily confused words. The question is, is it dead or is it still moving? So these are the two roots that we'll be dealing with, and you can see that they're very similar. Mem, vav, tet is for one of the verbs for moving, and mem, vav, tav is the root for being dead. The infinitive for moving is lamot, and the finitive for being dead is lamut, with the tet, Psalm 10.6. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. Proverbs 25.26, a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. Psalm 46.2, therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, the mountains are moved to the midst of the sea. Psalm 60, verse 2. You have made the earth to tremble. You have broken it. Heal the branches thereof, for it shakes. And this is kind of the basic meaning of this lamot, to be moved, to move, is that there's a, there's a shaking involved in it. There's a noun with the same root, Mot, which means a bar or a staff, we see in Numbers 13.23. And they came unto the brook of Ishkol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bore it between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. So the idea that this bar, this staff, is still maybe somewhat flexible, it can move. From Nahum 1.13, for now I will break his yoke from off you and will burst your bonds in sunder. Now I included this noun also meaning staff. Some etymologies say that it comes from the root nata, nun, tet, he, which means to stretch out. But within the concept of the, the bar or the staff, you could see how it might also come from the same root as mot, to move. Genesis 38:18, And he said, What pledge shall I give you? And she said, I'll take your ID card and your driver's license and your passport, your signet and your bracelets and your staff that is in your hand. And he gave it to her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him in this story about Judah and his daughter-in-law, Tamar. In Exodus 31, 2, See, I have called by name Betzal El, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And you can see easily how the word for staff, which represents the rulership, can be related to the word for tribe. If we go on to the other verb with the tav, mut, very common, Genesis 2.17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. And this is a very common literary figure of speech used in the Bible. It includes the infinitive plus the conjugated verb, mot tamut. And it's translated as surely you will, whatever the verb is. So it's translated, but it means literally you will die a death. We see it in Genesis 18.25. That be far from you to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And there are many, many examples of the use of the verb. So the problem becomes in the conjugations, how can we tell the difference? They're both hollow verbs. The hollow part is the vav. They both have mem and a t, t sound at the end. So we're going to look at that. The, we're going to start with the participle. And we see that, like the verb bow, to come, that the vowel under the first letter becomes a kama. I move ma, the feminine mata, the plural matim, and the feminine plural matot, as we would expect. The verb to die is a little more irregular, so it doesn't go to mat, it goes to met. And so it's quite easy to tell those apart, masculine met, Female meta, meta. That sounds like something I know what it is. Meta. Well, whatever it is, she is dying. Metim and metot. In the past tense, in the perfect tense, because the first 
T sound in the verb to move is a tet, it's going to remain in the conjugation. Matati, matata, matat, matat, mat, mata. And you see, if you remember in the hollow verbs, the participle, the present tense, for the third person, masculine, feminine, singular, are the same. Mat, he is moving or he moved. Mata, she is moving or she moved. Those are always the same in hollow verbs. And matnu, matatem, etc. For the verb to die because it ends in tav, you're not going to add the extra tavs for the conjugation. You're going to get a dogish in the tav. So that becomes, instead of matati, mati, mata, mat. Remember the third person singulars are the same as the present tense, met, meta. And we see also that that tsere is in the plural form, metu, they died. Now, in fact, in the imperfect form, we would run into a problem where both forms would look exactly the same. Both verbs conjugated in the future would look exactly the same. However, most of the time where the imperfect is used in the scripture, it is not in the pa'al, it's in the nifal, because as we see in the translation, I will not be moved. I'm not moving anything, I'm being moved. It's a passive form. So the conjugation becomes emot instead of amut. It becomes emot, timot, timoti, tenna, nimot, motu. The feminine plurals are going to sound the same. You would have to actually be looking at it. And we'll look at an example of this because the vowel converts back to the u instead of the o. But otherwise... In most of the cases, the use of this verb, to be moved, it will be in a passive form, nifal, and it will conjugate differently than to die. So, looking at the imperfect for to die, I will die, amut, tamut. Remember, in the present and past tense, the participle and the perfect tense, in a hollow verb, we don't see the middle letter, but it comes back in the imperfect, and for us, for to die, it will be that shuruk, that u. Tamutu, yamut, tamut. You see the second and third person feminine plural has exactly the same pronunciation, tamutenna. Now there are these two cases where the verb to move, mem, vav, tet, is used in the imperfect pa'al, and so it might be confusing. Deuteronomy 32:35. To me belongs vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide. So the foot is actually doing the moving. It's not being moved, but it's doing the moving. Foot is feminine, and so we see it conjugated for she will move. Tamut. Sounds like she will die or you will die. But if you look at the spelling, it's spelled with a tet in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. You shouldn't feel frustrated. By this, we have lots of homonyms in English, and how we tell them apart is by the context. For example, if I say I'm going to ring you up, that has to do with the telephone. But if I'm going to give you a ring, that has to do with a metal band to go on your finger. So in this case, in this example in Deuteronomy, their foot shall die, probably not. Their foot shall move, shall slip. And the other example, Isaiah 54.10, where the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed to Mutenna. It is in the Nephal, but it sounds exactly like the feminine plural for they will die. But my kindness shall not depart from you, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Tamut. Even though it's translated in a passive sense, the Hebrew is in a an active sense. The covenant is moving, says Yehovah that has mercy on you. And he does. He has mercy on you in all things.
Till next time, Tasim Ta'inayim al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.